Matt, we do get to get to, uh, I think, what was really the topic that you were really always here for. And that is your crazy hunch that we might go back in time. This is either patch 10.3 or 11.0. You have, you have for us uh, propositions and evidence. I will deliver those to you after I take a drink because I'm very dry. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through... Uh, the theory. So here's Matt's theory number one. The 10.3 is actually a quick trip back in time to the early Black Empire, uh, a primordial Azeroth patch zone where we'll have the Shu Hello, primal trolls. We'll meet young Nazoth back when he was young and handsome. We will stop Eridicron and kill him. We'll learn about the Void's motivations and we will come back to the present and find out, uh-oh, we've screwed it up. Now it's time for World of Warcraft Void Scarred, the real patch 11.0. Your other theory, then, is 11.0, that uh, that is an entire expansion set in the past where we get to discover a whole ton of stuff uh, where, actually, the deep past of Azeroth is nothing like we imagined. A beautiful, primordial, pre-shaped Azeroth, Kalimdor, of course, whatever its true name is. Um, the old gods are maybe somewhat there, maybe a bit more personable, a bit different in some way. We return to the present in between patches. We kind of dart uh, back and forth so it doesn't feel too stifling. Um... And then, yeah, a lot of it, then the same as the 10.3 idea, but just a lot more expanded, full renowned tracks, the primal races, new stuff, uh, room for other temporal visitors. What do you think? Where did this come from? Uh, it's interesting, right? Justify this... your work. Show you're working out. Well, that's why I've got the evidence <gasps> section. So quickly, I think it, a lot of it is just, they've been teasing us going back in time. They have. Not literally in the sense of they've been saying, you're going to go back in time soon, but there's so much time stuff. And they've only ever really dabbled it with it in a very uh, surface level. Outside of WAD, where the time travel wasn't the point, the time travel was a massive conceit to get us to see the Iron Horde yeah. and Orcs. They and treated Jan it Orc. more like a little pocket universe. You decide, you go in, you go out, don't think about it. Yeah, it was, we want Orcs and Draenei and cool stuff, but they're all dead. Shit. Time, I guess. That was clearly that. This one is more, why have we never, you know, went down to the caverns of time and went, yo, Nazdormu, can we set up a shop here? There's a load of stuff we'd like to see. Why have we never done that? And to me, kind of now is a perfect, like, version of it. Where there's chance that some of this is cleaned up in Dragonflight. But there's so many threads hanging from like throughout all of it. There's the deaths of Chromie, right? That was yeah. never really talked about again. Obviously that was a side bit of content. They don't have to talk about it, but it's there. And this is less stuff that we'll notice if they don't finish. It's more stuff that they could go, we have ideas, what do I want to do? Oh, that, oh, and, oh, that, oh, that, oh, that. We'll bring them these together and, you know, tie them up in a big bow and go, there's your expansion, please enjoy. But like there's Eternus, we're that big, we'll meet again. Don't expect Mercy whatever it was the line was. With the Turners who looked like, they didn't look like Chromie, but like was, they faced each other in the cinematic yeah. in a very important way. Turners, very cool. And also, not mentioned since, even though we've got a lot of Chromie content. Certainly makes you think, oh, wh why is Chekhov's gun sitting in the mantelpiece? Will someone pick up Chekhov's gun and use it in the next act? I wonder. It's exactly that. Where And then the Dawn of the Infinite, that was an off-screen invasion of the temple. Sure, budgetary concerns for a mid-patch. Yeah. Possible. Also, it just felt a little bit like, we need a conceit to stop it. Yeah, sure, whatever. So just a little bit, yeah. And then the Dawn of the Infinite was the end of the Infinite, apparently. Hello? Because it was the, because the, even the, I, I think it's interesting, because the heroic Dawn of the Infinite uh, is split into, is it the fall of Galakrond and the rise of Merzond? Oh, sorry, I think it's Galakrond's fall and rise of, or Merzond rise. Yeah. And you go, Merzond rises? Does he? Well, he goes. Yes. And then we stop it. Yeah. So, some dawn that was. That's like six, like six o'clock in the morning. The sun's gone up. Well, this all, is the all battle the birds for go, cuckoo, Azeroth. Cuckoo, cuckoo. This is and the battle And then the sun Azeroth just turns dawn. itself off. You know, like, it's like the battle for Azeroth dawn of the infinite. It's like, oh, it's not the dawn of the infinite that you thought you were stopping. Yeah. yeah it's it, a chromie fucking up the timeline here to save uh, Nosdormu is what's going to create the Nos or the Morazon that we fight. Yeah, so there's Whenever a lot. They of, pick that story up, of course. Exactly. There's a lot of that stuff they could do. There's a Ritikron mentioning this timeline specifically, and you can't go, well, why did they want this timeline and then never talk about time again? So 
you can't say this timeline, this timeline, this timeline without saying, by the way, here's some other timelines in a story session. Story like way. Because they've shown us the time rifts and mm. that's 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 great. I really enjoyed that. But it's also not like super awesome. In a time rift daily in Normu, the guy everyone thinks might turn evil goes back in time to the ordering of Azeroth. Relevant. Look, that's literally I just dox you. That is literally perfect. The ordering of Azeroth. Because I think we'll be going to before the ordering of Azeroth. But yeah, that would like, be cool. And then I guess yep. you read as the Earth Mother. So I did. Didn't this you? is interesting because it's allegorical. The Eyes of the Earth Mother is a myth. It is a story in which Musha and Anshe are created and they're, the Earth Mother plucks them from her eyes and sends them into the skies. And winter happens because she closes Anshe and only Musha is there. And, you know, summer happens because Anshe is there and Musha is closed. I'm literally gesturing to close my own eyes. I'm very, very theatrical today, apparently. So, it's all m metaphorical. Mm -hmm. But what if it's not? <gasps> because one of the things is that the pre-historical Azeroth was just like... What happened? No one really knows. But this book tells us basically everything. And it's like, it, it literally, it literally kind of happens. But we're so... So much has been shown of what can't, it's almost been talked about rather, but this stuff happening, this stuff kind of going, oh, what's what's next? What's next? What's next for World of Warcraft that was set in the past? Because the thing that really got me about this was like the all of the primordial stuff, all the primordial things here and there. Why not show us? Especially when we see Anshul in the Beacon to the Beyond, and you go, well, there's Anshul. That's and interesting. When I I don't want to say that we've been shadow lensed again, but we kind of have. Because we were told that there would be content in and around the primal trolls. I believe... That hasn't been seen. I believe that's been addressed. Oh. I can't remember where, but I remember reading someone say that was early concepts for the Jardin. Which Whoa! Definitely... Whoa, that lines up interestingly with some things that we think. all of our thoughts on the Jardin completely accurate in that primordial life. Primordial life in this place. And a lot more primordial life happening <laughs> consistently. Sweet. <laughs> so what kind of happened here was in the eyes of the Earth Mother, Anche is the sun, Musha is the moon or Elune, obviously, Shuhilo or the Torin. This is their version of this story, but she wipes away her tear, which is Logo, no, not Logosh, Losho, the, the mm -hmm. blue child, a little disappearing uh, second moon. That was just a kind of a cute reference to it. But she's freezing the skull and they were free. So they went around, they left her specifically, and then they went to the Shuhalo and Losho, and they taught them lots of things. And they were like, here's how to do things. Here's how to light fires, and here's yeah. how to cook food. All forms of different various things of how the world works. But they were like, right, we're going to sort of hunt down the source of the corruption. But they didn't seemingly do a very good job. But it was Elune and... And Shay, they're pretty strong, you'd imagine. So that's interesting. Alone and so well. And it may I'm I sorry, fucking I'm hope sorry. not. Uh, I'm sorry. It's, ooh, geez. Anyway. It's great. Matt's just got these buttons. You can press them. Yeah. Uh, the Alone button, so well button. It's a part of liking <laughs> things too much. But this is where Anshay gets wounded. Yes. Mortally. And the only way he can stay alive is when Alone stays near him and keeps him alive. Which is, people are like, oh, there's a Val's homeless chest. Is that the wound from the, from the void, from the shadows? But what happens at the end of this, and this is, like, the twins decided to set off to hunt down the source of corruption. Like, if you give this to someone as, like, a writing prompt, they'll go off and be like, ah, oh, I've got so much of this. Here's, like, the the two, what are called? Here's the, the sun and moon twins killing void stuff for three novels, like. Okay. And you can see the kind of, it immediately came in my head, what if you had that story and told it to us? What if we got to see a loon as, like, a person doing person stuff? And Anshay doing person stuff as a son. That would That'd honestly be, be pretty cool. But it would be a way to humanize the early days of Azeroth. And it would be a way to humanize herself. Because she's an active participant in the story. Which she hasn't been ever again. Because yeah. she's been asleep. Which happened shortly after the bit. Where she tells the twins to permanently take to the skies. Get it. Moon and sun in the sky now. They'll be able to chase away any shadows she cannot hold. And stay close. And also... They can't come back to her. So, 
why is Alun not helping people as much as she should? She can't. Yeah. Maybe her influence on Azeroth is limited because Azeroth said, fuck off, you've got shit to do. And then also, like, oh, this is the thing. There's other worlds. There are other we'll worlds. Pray to Alun. And that's exactly where, how did that happen? Did she start in Azeroth and then end up other places? Did they continue their hunt for the source of the corruption in this in the, the, the Great Dark Beyond? What happened to Anshay's wound? Is Anshul Anshay after he was corrupted from losing the wound? Did him and Alun get split in some capacity? Because you want to humanize Alun, right? Yeah. You want to humanize Alun in a really, like, in a way that makes her makes all of her flaws and all of her parts emotional. Because people love when she was this, like, mysterious moon goddess that showed up and helped stuff. And, like, that works really well if she gets to keep... And this is going to be, obviously... There's, like, Azeroth and Alun both have potential to be very, um, like, heidelin s figures. Yes. In a way where it's like, okay, well... Could go, be very yeah, could yeah. be very bad. It could be very good. I would lean towards very good because everyone, ev- ev- everyone cried when Alun brought uh, Asera up. All they have to do is, like, do more of that consistently. Mm-hmm. That's what they need to do. Give her that like feel of like, I'm actually this caring goddess. But there's so much there with all of that. But what got me the most is, why would this be soon and not in the future? Let's talk about Katanth <laughs> again. Yes! As we always do. Yes, Katanth has been in <laughs> everything I've talked about for a week, which is great because you know what? Saying Katanth is really fun. Hang on though. Yish. Yesharaj, the Jord, Nazjatar, Katanth. Is Katanth compatible? Yeah, no, Katanth is okay. Bit. Yeah. So, mm. it's fun though. The reason I want to talk about Katanth is very quick, actually. Oh, it's really cool though, because you primed yeah. me in this before stream, and I kind of realized, oh, that's really, yeah. that's really cool. That kind of goes into things being primarily cool in the way the Legion was, and make everyone excited. So, the Tomb I guess. Yeah. What was that? That uh, used to be the Temple of Elune. What was it before that? The site uh, at which a great battle called the Battle of Katanth took place. Interesting. Now, is Katanth a person? Is Katanth a place? Is Katanth some sort of ancient thing? We, we don't know. Is Katanth a nation? Who tells us about Katanth? Well, Zalatath does. does who it- resides in the... Black Blade of the Empire? Blade of the Black Empire. Blade of the Black Empire. Ah! So, yeah, there are people who point out that uh, Black Blade of Katanth, Blade of the Black Empire. Yes. Not the same thing. There are at least one part in game, I think there's two, where Zalatath is offhandedly referred to as the Black Blade. Just for shorthand for Blade of the Black Empire. But it's like, oh, the Black Blade. So, yeah, also Naifu Waifu, yes, exactly. Or, or the Bay Blade, yeah, that's a good one too. But... The thing about this is Zalatath actually says stuff in the Temple of Loon talking about it. And this is what we're talking about, Loon. So whenever we go to the Tomb of Sargeras and we're in there, I'll actually throw this back to me. Shadow Priests with Zalatath equipped in the, I can't remember what the room was called, but it was a room where the Sisters of the Moon are fought. It was basically like the center of the Temple of Loon, like the worship room. And once the boss was dead, she would say, and this is a random event, so it didn't always happen. She would say, ah, there's some terribly paraphrased. There's some lingering power of a loon here. This is where she also talks about the upstart goddess line mm-hmm. that we've talked about before, where she calls a loon upstart goddess in quotes, which you don't know how she does that with her words, but the text says that, so that's important. But the shadow priest can absorb the power there. And they do. They can absorb the lingering power of a loon. And then it goes back. It backfires and they die. Yeah. It kind of in the same jokey fun way that when you, uh, Zalatath asks you to ask Odin about Logan's final words and then he kills you for it, which is pretty rude. But ultimately it is a little bit of, okay, sweet. We've got a loon and Zalatath as these like opposites, these like enemies, these like mortal stuff. When could that have happened, Michael? When could Alun and Zalatath have met or engaged with each other? When could Zalatath have learned anything about Alun? Well, maybe Zalatath got pummeled into the ground near the Temple of Alun. Near, near, yeah, and Katanth. In Katanth. Maybe this is, mm-hmm. you know, before the ordering. Zalatath's knocking about. Maybe something to do with Alun. So, who was there 
on the planet, not in the sky yet, when the old gods attacked? Uh, the Earth Mother. And Alun. And Anshay. And, and Anshay. Who was also there when the old gods attacked? Who is Anshay? Probably not Zalthat. What is Anshul? But anyway, who's mm. who was there as well? The old gods, including Zalthat. If she was if she was one of the ones that landed and then got eaten, or if she was something else entirely. Either way. Either way. Either way. Elune and Zaltath probably know each other. And obviously Zaltath's gonna talk shit if they forced Azeroth to fire Elune and Anshay up into the sky. Up start. Yeah. Goddess. Which is did Elune maybe have some ideas of what she was? Was she going around giving edicts to the Black Empire? Was she fighting stuff? Did she win? Is she the one who did something to that? Why can Zaltath absorb the loon's power? What? How does that make sense? Is Elune some sort of dark aspect? Or sorry, is Zalatath some sort of dark aspect of Elune? Were they roommates, Talias? Maybe they were. Maybe they were roommates. <laughs> I like it's true. No, um, <laughs> honestly, it's like there's a little bit, of, there's definitely like some history there. Some really obvious history. And that's an opportunity for them to go, let's go see what that was. Yeah. I, th- th- that's basically, that's my thesis. There's cool shit and they can talk, tell us about it. But it's like, there's so much here going on with like that history that I think is so rife for the same stuff that's happening where you can tell in certain ways they are kind of held back by everything that they have, right? <laughs> They're held back by all of their previous actions. <laughs> yeah. You look at the amount of bother they kind of had making sure the centaur fit as an example. Where they're like, hey, we want the Maruk centaur. Because yeah. we think centaur are cool. And we're all furries. So, okay, centaur. And then... We want, uh, sorry, I... We li- want soft, fuckable centaur. How do we do this? Yeah, sorry. Said the developers. I literally got blindsided by... <laughs> my, my, my internal processes went, are there any non-furry races in the game now? And I think the answer is mostly no. Um, but... They have trouble with the centaur because they have to go, okay, the centaur is all that they were not, not the same and they were different and all that old centaur lore doesn't apply to these centaur, even though they're centaur. Shut up, please. Uh, so what if you go back to the start and write all the start lore? <laughs> then you don't have to worry. You can say it if you want. You can go, what ha- oh, wasn't primordial, primordial Ather- Azeroth? There were even shorter Volpera for some reason. Or they're, e- or they're even <gasps> taller Volpera. Even <laughs> taller Volpera. Oh, yeah. now we're cooking. Yeah, it's like there's Volpera and for some reason they're blue now. And everyone goes, okay, sweet. Or like, here's some fucking red lizard people. Everyone goes, World of Warcraft, patch 11.1, Judy Klops. <laughs> oh, that's not the right word to use anyway. Oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ. Um, yeah, what was I saying? You keep Sometimes, all this shit. Do you know what the problem is, right? There's these words, and all I, I know they'll have, I'll know that I know they'll make Matt have a reaction, but that's because I know it's a bad word, but I don't actually know what it means. But I know he knows. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, dear God. It's a knowledge is a burden and a curse, <laughs> I tell you that. Yeah, knowledge is power is definitely wrong. No, knowledge is weakness. Um, ignorance is bliss. They say that for a reason. But ultimately, like, that's it. There's so much in the past that they could talk about. Even the prospect of what did the Titans do to Azeroth? It's very important for, like, where the story's going because we yes. kind of want to know what were they doing and why. So one of the pretty quick ways Ooh. to do that is to go, here's what Azeroth looked like before the Titans. It looked way fucking sicker, way Set cooler. pieces. That too. Like, if you want the your end of expansion... Either your end of expansion or start of expansion cinematic to be the death of your charge. Like, that would be a pretty big moment. Uh, it would be uh, probably before that, I imagine. Yeah. That would be big. Okay, if that was like the oh, end be, of yeah, the expansion, would, that would be big. It would be, I, I imagine this would be set before the Black Empire. But you'd fuck or in the, the timeline, or in the, or, No, you wouldn't. No. You know why you wouldn't? Why? Because you're in the past and you're the writer. You can just say whatever you want. Nah, dude. Nah, it's going to change. See, here's the thing, though. Whenever you come back, are you coming back to your original timeline? No, you're not. You're coming back to a new timeline that you've created and then went to by going forward in time after you've went back in time. Nope. Yes. Back to the future rules. Shit. Oh, really? Back? But like... Back you, to the future you, rules make people angry. In fact, no, all... They, no, they don't. All time travel rules No, make they don't. 
Why do you think Back to the Future was the perfect time travel movie of all time outside of Bill and Ted? Because they did it and no one got confused. Does it not have all the paradoxes? No, 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 it's a big problem. It's fine. No, it does. No, no, it's fine. There's a couple things. But like, (laughs) but like broadly the rules of you make things right. You make things right and then it's fine. I guess that's it, Ben. I am going off Shadowbringers rules. Yeah. Whoa. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so there's like... (laughs) Remember that. Yeah, so... There is like this, uh, there's a, there's the way to do it properly. And that is, right, you go back and you have to make sure everything is as it was. Mm. And this could be full, because that's what they've done with the Cabinet of Time stuff. The entire way is you have to make sure nothing's out of place. They could do an entire expansion of that. And just make it apply to like the broad bits and kind of go, well, okay. And it's so far back in the past that... As long as you don't do anything, um, as long as you don't do like a Back to the Future bad ending, or a, a, yeah, a, what's, do, do Back or, to the Future. What? There's a Back to the Future of three, isn't there? Yeah, it was the. Do they get bad after the first one? No, they don't. Really? They're not as good, but I like both of them. Okay, I like three more because it's set in the Wild West and it's really cool. What? Uh, yeah, it's awesome. What? It's really good. Oh my god. Okay, well okay. I don't know if it's really good. I liked it a lot. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> I think the the thing they could do is we have been told lies. We go back and it's all different and that's fine. And we have to stop someone from doing something weird or strange. Like Eridicron goes back in time, starts to wreck the place. Zalatath goes back in time to give herself the hungry, hungry essence or to p- plug it into Azeroth before it's while she has her eyes open or something like that something weird like that when she's still awake doesn't matter all that matters is we go back everything's different and as long as we don't future ama fry anything we're fine (laughs) i i I feel like with some people may not don't become your own grandfather you're fine as long as you do that you'll be you'll you'll be sound which is going to be difficult for some uh world of warcraft players but anyway Go back in time. It's so far back that it, it doesn't matter if you kick a rock, right? Because if you kick a rock and the rock's over there, it's fine. And they could also design it so it was a circular timeline and us being there was important the whole time because we made things right. They could do that as well because you just go, who gives a shit? But those are the minor points, I think. The thing I'm focused on more is how cool it could be to literally have them go. That's fair. We have got complete operational freedom within the bounds of I as the Earth Mother, and making sure that whatever happens leads to the timeline. And you get to see all these places of primal power unfucked with. Exactly. You get to see... Because I imagine... There's a version of this that's... Karazhan. You know where Karazhan is? What does yeah. that look like? Dead Dead exactly. What does Duratar look like before it was um, Duratar? What does... I mean, uh, this is the thing where... I asked turned into the sandy crack. It would, yeah, it wouldn't even be that. Because I'm thinking pre-shaping. I'm thinking, I'm thinking early Black Empire. I'm thinking... Before it was all big one thing. Like, the thing is, the Black Empire. Whenever we do go back to it, it's, it's Nine Lotha. It's pretty shit. No. No? No. I'm wrong. We can go to, oh, we can go to pre-Black Empire. Or we go to Black Empire and they go, oh yeah, that was Nine Lotha, but everything else is different. They're like, oh yeah, that's fine. You you just went to, um, I don't know, the maximum security prison that we have. Yeah. More, <laughs> um, like, that, that, okay, to people though, here's, here's the thing. A lot of this sounds cool, but when people think of Nihilotha, they think of um, they think of H.P. Lovecraft. They think of um, all that stuff that I used to write lore videos about back when I was young and uh, and full of vitality. They uh, you know they think of what they know, right? Uh, but if this expan- if this expansion is World of Warcraft, old but different, then people will feel like quite um, you know no, they could feel a bit perturbed. No, think about it this way. Nihilotha, the sleeping city. It's a city. It's a city. Outside that city, it's not Nihilotha. The Black Empire hasn't gotten there yet. But like, it's primordial. It's pre. You like you have maybe there's a big zone in the middle. It yeah, is all taken Bla- care of. Look at the Black Empire art. The Chronicle doesn't real. <laughs> Chronicle doesn't real. Michael is fine. But it does. But here it be. No. So if not real, no. then how? <laughs> No, so... I'll put the image in. There's no uh, pictures of pre-ordered Azeroth. 
There's no pictures of the deluxe edition with free battle pass. So are you saying that Peter Lee is a... He's, he's slowly uploading 70% there. Are you saying that artist Peter Lee is in fact a, a, a Titan shill? I'm saying that... God, it really is taking a while to load, isn't it? Go on! There we go. See? Now, Matt, this doesn't look like a nice place. Yeah, there's, but, there's, I, I could I could really try to break it down for you, but it doesn't look nice. Yeah, but it looks like one zone. But Wait, like, what, what what's over there? I mean, why am I gesturing you with my hands? People can't see what I'm doing. I doubt it's a field full of fucking unicorns, dude. Doesn't it? Why can't how could it not be? This doesn't look like a place where fun happens. Are you yeah, telling but fun me fun happens over the mountain range? Over the mountain range and the happy orgy pit where all the people have fun, really. Yes, because <laughs> this this is end game Black Empire, right? I'm talking early Black Empire. I'm like, talking. I'm talking. I'm just zooming I'm talking in here. has a wee bit so, on. Look yeah. at now, just to zoom in here, right? So this is, over, this is Odin propaganda. No, me. but look, look at this. We have big fucking funny looking dudes, and that just does seem to be actually Matt. Who who the hell are they? Because why do they look like humans? Why is there a bunch of people there? <laughs> Okay, so Has we have whoever looked at this. We have whoever these people are, and they're clearly being herded up. <laughs> yeah, we got. We got. Oh my god, that's <laughs> that must be trolls. Right. So, I don't know. Okay, let's just say they're trolls. So right, well, these they, well people, they have to be trolls or Torin yeah, or something like that. These people are clearly being rounded up, and yeah. I doubt it's like, oh, you're going to be rounded up and sent into the ball pit for playtime. It doesn't look like that. <laughs> Matt, I like I okay. I get everything you're saying. This seems like a horrible place to be. This, this doesn't is, seem like the good guys. This is Odin propaganda. Now, and I am Steve. Steve, please drop us a super chat. I <laughs> am. I am actually like I'm being genuinely serious. Okay. I think that there's. You, you like, can't tell WoW players that this is propaganda. I mean, I know they literally did and they already have, yeah. but in a way where they'll feel it, that'll be like, you know, that's that's like, there, there, there is no Warren Bassing say, everything's good. <laughs> that's why I'm thinking it's, like, that's why I'm going pre-Black Empire. Okay. This, bit, this clearly sucks ass. Like, I'm not denying this, this, this no. <laughs> that doesn't look good. I'd be very bored of that. I was bored of Nihalotha in Nihalotha, never mind every other time we went to it. But seriously, like, what happens when you go earlier before this is all built? What is what is before? What was here before? Show us that. Mm. Show the old gods arriving. And immediately we have to do something about it. Because here's one of the ideas I had. And this is going to be fucking weird. It may be a bit too much for a while, but what if we had to help us off. Right? Because what happens in our timeline? And this is where we get the whole like fixing um fixing Titan stuff, right? You get all the fixing yeah. fixing uh fixing happy you do that. What if Nizoff is like, yo dude, I know who you are, because I've got magic that I saw you in the PSN I did a breach with it. So I know who you are. <laughs> Context. Um our country's police service leaked all of their information of who their staff are. Including addresses. <laughs> Include, yeah. Everything. Whoops. It's really bad. But uh, it's probably shouldn't have been late if it's gone. That's something. And just, just thought of me. But uh, what if this all goes right, boys? So, right. Um, I love how he's always Northern Irish when you yeah, do it. Yeah. So, right here, lads. I've seen you. I know who you are. I know where you live. I know that you kill me i know that you kill me and that's okay but if you don't help me now i'm going to die now and what do you think happens if i die now and Cthune eats me or uh yogg eats me or yasharaj eats me well what yeah. happens then well then you lose the ancient so, one yeah all that stuff of someone else happens. Yeah, so the gambit, the Nazoth could, he, we could show up and he could just be like, you're going to do everything I tell you and that's going to get you to the timeline where I win. And then you kill me later. But let's not talk about that. Which is going to be his plan anyway. Yes. Because in killing him, we free him from his prison. So it would sort of be that we free him from his prison in the opportune time. 
considering we send his... I guess, like, that's the interesting thing. Maybe he is counting on a little bit of Ashara doing Ashara things, uh, because then if Ashara goes to Zareth Umbra when he is there, then maybe he can do something useful. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, who knows? It hasn't happened yet, but it seemed like that's where Ashara was going. Yeah. Not that we knew it at the time. <laughs> that's back in the days before we knew about Zareth units and Halo rings, the Arbiter, the, the Ark, Keith David... World of Warcraft and all of those things. Yeah, so there's a lot of stuff there that I think is, like, interesting storytelling. But even just, like, getting more of that stuff in would be cool. Yeah. Now, there's... Uh, I definitely... I feel like if they do that, it would be mostly pre-Black Empire. Also, the Zalta thing's interesting because... the I, I, I'm amazed I didn't click on it before until I was writing that video there. But the fact that... Zalatath was held under the tides until a certain time by the Naga and then was let free to go and start corrupting the like the mortal races and then when we left her on the sands of Silithus the Naga picked her up again took her to BFA which is very nice of them <laughs> that's part in Silithus but that's interesting because the Naga are the you know the the ranking order is Naga Ashara Nizoth kind of Ashara because she would because the Naga are loyal to her first so it's like, whose plan was it? Who put Zalatath there in BFA? Was it Nizoth or was it Ashara? Ah! Oh. <laughs> yeah, you kind of have that, like, yeah. that, that stuff. You can do whatever you kind of want in a way. So I feel like there's so much possibility here for just... Like, I'm going to focus in on the pre-ordering. The pre the pre ordering. The pre ordering of the expansion to get your extra tenders. The pre-ordering of Azeroth before the Titan showed up and made it one big land mass or whatever they did. Because it's kind of hard to know if that was it originally or not because they shaped it in a load of ways. And they shaped it before the Sundering. Because they shaped it while they were fighting. I think. So it's a little bit unclear, but yeah. Load of stuff. Load of cool stuff back in time. I could see it happening. I full realism mode. I would expect it to be a one and done patch. I expect my theory one to be it. Where we go back, kick some like or kick a Redicron's teeth down his throat. Yeah. Stop him from putting the ice in somewhere he shouldn't. And then oh. go back to the timeline and go. Oh, well, we made sure we look at that. We time traveled. Nothing happened. Went wrong. And then we step through the portal and we come back and all of Azeroth has been revamped or is void because we were away for five minutes. And that was part of the gambit all along. And Riddicron was a distraction, which is ironic because he made for a distraction. <laughs> Sorry, just the bit I'm thinking about is the hungry hippos. Sorry, that comes out of nowhere. The um, the the hungering void essence that gets slurped out of a uh, out of Galacron by uh, Eridicron. How does that figure into this? That essence. That is our, our a... speculation had that placed as being the essence of the ancient one in the alternative timeline in the time rift. Sorry, I know this is getting like there's fucking layers and shit. God, how is it that we're able to have this discussion about WoW, yet earlier on in our Slack channel, or our Discord channel at work, we, we spent a good hour trying to work out what the timeline of Overwatch's story is, because we were all so bamboozled. I think it was me, you, and Connor being silly, and Connor being like, for fuck's sake, children, it's this. It's because WoW PD is good, and the Overwatch wiki is less so, <laughs> more or less. But I think it is mostly that... Um... <sighs> The Hungry Essence is weird. Like, there's definitely parts of this that don't really make a lot of sense. And they would need some finessing in. But the Hungry Essence came out of nowhere anyway, so... And there's a Dragon Soul that's made of Void or something? Whatever. They could do whatever they want. A Raidicron could go back in time and plug it into Azeroth, or Zaltak could keep it and eat it now, or... Any number of things could actually happen, I think. But it's like, it's clearly key. But it'll be key to either Azeroth or Zaltath. I think. It is mostly me thinking... We haven't been back in time properly. We literally have been, but not properly. We haven't had our Caverns of Time expansion, which we've been asking for since the Caverns of Time was put in the game in TBC. We've been like, Blizzard, where is it? Why can we not see the past? And then they just never bothered. <laughs> so it's like, do not bother now? It's that thing with the Caverns of Time. You just keep on thinking, come on, come on. You've got... You've got so much cool shit in your game. And I suppose, actually, they really did use the caverns a lot. TBC, Wrath, Kata. And they yeah. stopped. 
I mean, the anniversary event, but like... Yeah, they stopped it after Canada because they went, oh, maybe we've thrown the ass out of this and it was a bit shaky. I don't know. But maybe. Mm. Mm-hmm. I, I would... I, I mean, okay, this is totally aside from the point now, but um, I would like some sort of separate... Almost basically, do you know what I'd like? Time the Time Warders or whatever, but Hildebrand. So not actually Hildebrand, but like just some story that, you know, is just updated every, you know, here and there and everywhere of like, here's a cool place from the past. Let's go ensure Broxigar is able to be a big chat. And you just get, you know, 30, 20 minute Broxigar dungeon. Everyone gets to be happy. Yes. Ooh, Broxigar dungeon. <laughs> Brox is Brox 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 into that. Ooh. Brox. Cool character. Man, he, the only living creature to ever win Sargeras. Like, and he was just a dude. Like, just literally a just a dude. Yeah. To be fair, he did have the Axe of Scenarius, which did kind of actually do the damage, but at the same time, he did stand atop a mountain of demons and leap at Sargeras' leg. And you've seen how big he was. Sargeras is a fairly big boy. I have to do something that sword soon, please. <laughs> <laughs>